Regard the tapir. If you look at its nose, you might think of an elephant or anteater. Its body might remind you of a pig, but tracing the tapir's relatives is quite a feat. In fact, it's the feet that give it away. This shy and endangered animal is really related to the horse and rhino. Hi, I'm Jack Hanna. Join me on Zoo Life to learn more about the animals of the world. Hola, amigo. Bienvenido. Welcome to my fiesta. As you can see, my Spanish isn't too good, but I'll tell you one thing. The people of Mexico are beautiful, and so are its animals. So let's vamanos. We got a whole lot of animals to see. Adios. A good place to start is in the southern state of Chiapas. There's animals from the rainforest, mountains, and desert. But the only place to see them all together is right here at Zumat. This is a Baird's tapir, native to this part of Mexico. As a matter of fact, what makes the zoo so special in the town of Tuxa Gutierrez is that all the animals here are native to this region. And with me is Carlos Guichard, the curator here at the zoo. Now, this is a very rare animal, isn't it? Same, yes. You find these in Mexico or in Central South America? Mexico and Central America. It's the most endangered mammal in Mexico because so much of the forest where it lives has been destroyed and it's also hunted for food. They hunt them for food. It's long nose here, it's good for browsing. Come here. What's his nombre? No. No name? No. Oh, Fat Jack. Fat Jack. Come here. Come here, Fat Jack. Gordo. Hey, Gordo. Tapirs may seem like a pig or even an elephant. But these primitive mammals are really related to the horse and rhino. Their snout is actually a combination of nose and upper lip. You'd never tell by Gordo here that tapirs are considered shy and solitary creatures. Oh yeah, he loves that. Mm. Oh, I wish I had somebody scratch behind my ears. Oh, Gordo's going to sleep on me. Give me a kiss goodbye. A guard? <laughs> wow. Zumat is one of the best designed zoos in Latin America. A visit here is like taking a nature walk. Some animals wander freely in the forest setting, and others live in large natural enclosures. I love the way they hang around. It's sure easy to see how spider monkeys got their name. This troop of some 20 members carry on their lives much as they would in any forest canopy. The spider monkey is from here? 
Sí, sí, eh, desde el sur de México a Centroamérica. Yes, from southern Mexico to Central America. It's a species that's in danger of extinction because more than 70% of their forest has been destroyed. Poachers also kill their mothers so they can sell the babies to the pet trade. Matan a las madres para vender las crías pequeñas. In this peaceful oasis, these spider monkeys have a great life. There you go. There are definitely a few perks to living at Zumat. Dinner time is a great time to observe these intelligent primates and to once again be reminded of our close relationship. <laughs> Years ago, this very forest was full of wildlife. In fact, this ocelot is the descendant of a wildcat that lived here before the zoo was built. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Once prevalent throughout Mexico and Latin America, all of the magnificent cats at Zumat are endangered by man's excesses. Boy, look at that, right up above us, man. So this is the margay smaller than the ocelot. Their habitat destroyed by humans. The ocelot and margay have also been victims of the pet and fur trade. The jaguarundi, which almost resembles a weasel or otter, has been persecuted by humans from Texas to Panama. Once king of the jungle and now so threatened, the rare opportunity to see the jaguar reminds us of these cats' awesome strength and beauty and the awesome need to save them. Hello. Beautiful. That's supposed to be the prettiest vulture in the world, the king vulture. Zoomat has some birds and animals so rare you can't even see them in many zoos. So this is in the same family as a condor. Yes. Oh. Yes. También en peligro de extinción. Almost extinct. The harpy eagle is possibly the biggest, strongest eagle in the world. This three-foot-high, 20-pound bird can take monkeys and other large prey by surprise. As general curator, Carlos not only knows all the Zuman animals, he speaks each one's language. That's good, he talks to you. My owl Spanish isn't too good. You do it. Carlos, these howler monkeys run free? They're free? Yes. No cage? No. Oh, and, and they're from here. They're from Mexico. Sí. From here, yeah? Mexico and Central America. Oh, yeah. Do I... that. Call them. Go. <laughs> you got the beard. <laughs> the hot beard. <laughs> It's Cayman courtship time, and believe it or not, Carlos knows their mating call. Cayman hears you. Oh, jeez. Carlos, don't call him anymore. Oh, man. Whoa! Holy! Wow, listen to him, Carlos. Wow. That's aggressive, isn't it? I told you they were aggressive, Carlos. I know my Cayman. That's amazing. He could have... Holy mackerel. It's a good thing the seven-month-old baby hasn't started acting like an adult yet. This little Cayman was hatched right here at the zoo. And, it, and the mother had seven babies. Seven. I see this. The, the Cayman is from Mexico? Sí. Now, this animal is almost hunted to extinction. 
eh, los cazan para hacer zapatos, cinturones, belts, shoes, pocketbooks. Zumat hasn't closed its eyes to the Cayman's plight. In a program to replenish wild populations, this baby will soon be freed into a reserve on the Pacific coast of Mexico. The mat in Zumat stands for Miguel Alvarez de Toro. It was this man's dream over 50 years ago to start a zoo with all the wonderful animals from the state of Chiapas. Why do you think that this state of Mexico has more diversification of animals than other areas? Why so many animals here? I think because there are so many climates, high mountains, the valleys, humid, dry. We have many, many habitats, and so there are many species. I understand you just got through writing a book on bugs, spiders? The spiders. The more recently, the spiders. You like spiders? Oh, yes, certainly. They're very interesting. Woo! I like spiders. No, they're very interesting. They bite. Mm, well, the people bite more. <laughs> As a young man, Alvarez de Toro thought there were already enough zoos with exotic elephants and tigers. He wanted his people to know their own native wildlife. To know is to love, and that means even those animals that aren't usually the objects of our affection. With Don Miguel's interest in these creatures, it's no wonder the reptile house has some very intriguing residents. <laughs> when Alvarez del Toro founded this zoo over 50 years ago, the Quadi roamed freely in the state of Chiapas. Today, this Mexican version of the raccoon and the other animals at Zumat have become threatened in the wild. Thanks to one man's insight, the people of Mexico and the rest of the world can still marvel at these animals in their own environment and be inspired to save their remaining numbers. Well, look at this one, climbing. Now that they've all eaten, they've all gone up into their trees where they'll sleep for the night. Beautiful. Look at him. The Yucatan coast of Mexico is one of nature's real treasures. Just ask the millions of people who visit Cancun each year. But there's much more here than sunshine and sandy beaches. We're going to explore this golden land for its real treasures, the incredible wildlife of Mexico. So let's go, on the land. Cancun is an ancient Maya Indian name that means golden vessel. Right under your nose, or snorkel, is the ocean's golden treasure chest. What seems like a magical underwater garden is really a coral reef made of tiny animals and their remains. There's one place near Cancun that's a great place to snorkel, and a whole lot more. This is Ishkaret, south of Cancun, better known as nature's sacred paradise. As you can see, the people that come here really get involved with the environment, and they have a great time as well. So let's go. At Ishkaret, nature and history combine in a perfect setting to enjoy Mexican culture. Pancho. Pancho. Look at this big one. Look at it. Look at it. A thousand years ago, Maya Indians took sacred baths here. Today, the visitor can take a dive with Ishkaret Star Attractions. 
The experience begins by hearing the dolphin's sonar calls, direct from underwater mics. Next, a little about dolphin anatomy. Co-owner and head trainer Alex Gomez Rubio has worked with dolphins for over 20 years. Uh, they're varying from nine to about 14 years old. You can tell a dolphin's uh, age by his teeth. If you were to take a dolphin tooth out and cut it, it's got annual rings, just like a tree. Then you learn the do's and don'ts of dolphin etiquette. Or don't hug them, even when you feel like hugging them. If you hug them, they feel trapped, okay? They don't like that. Don't chase them around. If you chase them, they think you're playing tag, okay? You will never catch them. Finally, the magic moment, meeting them face to face. In all my years with animals, I had never shared space with a dolphin. Swimming, touching, just being with each other. All I can say is, wow. I wonder if they do this in the wild. Can you believe how friendly they are? What really do you hope that people will take away from this experience? I mean, this has been an amazing experience. Well, we hope it's a little bit to educate them so they know a little bit more about the dolphins, know a little bit about taking care of the oceans. I mean, you can see it from their faces out there. They just seem to be having such a, a wonder. It's almost like an awe-inspiring experience that they're having. I couldn't believe it. The best was yet to come. You'd never believe that the tourist beaches of Cancun are only a couple of hours away. This is the biosphere of Shan Khan, and the friends of Shan Khan protect the land as well as the wildlife that lives here. And this is Juan Basaris, who's been working on this project for what, about five years? Five years, yes. Well, this is a beautiful canal here. Well, it's a beautiful canal and a huge biosphere reserve. We're speaking about 1.3 million acres. Let's oh. try it and go see oh. a little bit of it. I'd love to. Cesar, vámonos. Vámonos, I know that means. Let's, Let's go. go. The boat trip is part of an eco-tour that Juan and the friends of Sean Khan offer to the public. The price of admission provides them funds to help the habitat, and the eco-tourist gets an adventure away from man-made comforts, straight to the wonders of nature. Uh, there is uh, some natural areas that should be protected. I mean, this is real natural. What is this stuff? <laughs> well, this is, we're coming to mangrove, yeah. and uh, this is part of uh, of ecotourism. In, in other types of tourism, uh, this you could get sued by having uh, yeah, a snake drop out of a tree and, uh, or something. But uh, here it's part of the experience. Uh, you have to experience natural areas, so it's part of it. Uh, well, I'm experiencing it real natural right now. <laughs> now yeah, you, it won't hurt you. Huh. It won't hurt me. Traveling through untamed nature also means a possible encounter with the exotic wildlife that roams the biosphere. Maybe the people in Cancun will never see a jaguar, but just knowing that there's a jaguar close to their hotel will be an incentive for them to help the whole idea of conservation. Sean Khan is one of the few places where the jaguar can still be seen. That's because each cat needs its own large territory to roam so thousands of acres are necessary to sustain a healthy population. 
Fortunately, Shan Khan is large enough that not only the jaguar, but four other species of cats can be spotted. The jaguarunde, the margay, the ocelot, and the cougar. If you know where to look, you might also marvel at the taper, the quatamundi, <laughs> and of course, the howler and the spider monkeys. And this small creature is one of the most plentiful mammals in Shan Khan. What kind of bat is this? This bat is called a Peronotus parnelli. It's an insect eating bat. We have bats with many different uh, eating habits. They eat seeds, they eat fruit, they eat uh, nectar, they eat pollen, they eat blood, they eat insects. Luz del Carmen Colnanero, she's the biologist in charge of this project. She released them uh, after catching them, and uh, it's a project that's been going on for, this is the second year, so we believe we can get good information about that. Now, would that bite me if I touched it? Oh, it will sure bite you, and you can see it's got a lot of little insects. Oh, yeah. Unjustly feared, the poor bat has been the victim of persecution wherever it exists. But the truth is, its role in the environment may be more important than any other group of mammals. So what, what purpose does a bat serve? Oh, bats uh, are uh, uh, very important. They act as pollinators, they, act, uh, they eat a lot of insects, uh, they, um, they are a very important part of the environment. They're probably the most abundant mammals in this part of, of, of the country. Uh, this bat is very interesting species because uh, they've, they uh, attract many, many insects daily, you know. And there are beautiful bats. It's incredible, but they have beautiful bats. So you're the bat woman of Mexico, like yeah. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> bat woman. Yeah, yes. <laughs> bat biologist. She's a bat biologist. <laughs> What, are you going to let it go? Yeah. Get out of the way. <laughs> Which way is he going to fly? Make sure it flies away from me. I'm going to stand behind one he, <laughs> he has a radar. Remember he has yeah. a radar. He, he won't has, hit you. Oh, radar. He has a radar. Yeah, I've heard of radar, yeah. yeah. A lot of things have radars. Planes have radars and they don't often make it. <laughs> Hopefully this one makes it. Should we throw him up? Even though it's free to go, this drowsy bat, used to sleeping during the day, doesn't seem that anxious to fly away home. Ah! Too tired. Yeah. Hang him in the tree. Let's hang yeah. him in the tree over here. I think it's a better idea. If you hang him in the tree, then he can fly when he wants to. Luz del Carmen will return periodically to monitor the bat's progress. Since this animal can't survive in a damaged environment, a healthy bat will indicate that the forest is still thriving. See you later, bat. There we go. Oh, very yeah. good. Now he can rest. Let me go get the Batmobile. Right next to those two sticks sticking up. Okay. He needs it. Here on the Caribbean coast of Mexico's Yucatan, Shan Khan is a haven for birds and for bird watchers. Over 350 species of birds have been sighted. This must be Baby Island. Yeah, this is a big rookery. Uh, how old is that bird? I would guess that it's one month old. That's a reddish egret, Egreta rufescens. That egret will be flying in a month and a half or two months. So, Xi'an Khan, what does that exactly mean? Well, that's uh, the Maya words for 
where the sky is born. You get pretty much an idea of the vastness of the flatness of the place and the sky just grows out of the land. In Shan Khan, where sky and sea also merge, the ecotourists can take time out to explore the underwater community of the coral reef. This magical garden is really made up of the skeletons of living animals. After snorkeling, our intrepid ecotourist takes a well-deserved rest while traveling through canals built by the ancient Mayas hundreds of years ago. What, what is that? What is that? That's a, a Maya ruin. Perhaps they prayed here before going to the far-off seas. And probably that's where old Batty lived. The bat we caught we probably oh, yeah, is really? in one of these buildings. Jeepers. So this temple is where they worshipped. Like they're gods? Oh yes, they asked for rain, they asked for for uh, good the crops. It's, uh, it's a very important part of the culture. Although the ancient Maya civilization disappeared, the Maya people endure. About 1,000 live in the Shan Khan biosphere. Just what is a biosphere reserve? Okay, a biosphere reserve, it's a little part that is set aside to let evolutionary processes go on. In national parks, you usually take people out first and then include them only as tourism. In biosphere reserves, man is one of the key important ingredients in making it work. I wonder how many people lived here. Oh, well, it's a very, very big area. Two miles north, two miles south. So, you know, the people live here and work as well. What, there's two things here, you, you save it. You save it, and but you save it to use it. Jack, this is Candido Camar. Hello. He is one uh, of the persons who got high on the idea of organic agriculture, and he's practicing organic agriculture now. For instance, he's got uh, marigold here. Oh, I love flowers. Yeah. Well, it's not. All, they're not only lovely. He uses them to combat uh, nematodes on the on the soil. So that, that, those, those flowers kill the worms? Those flowers kill the worms, oh. yes. So okay. it's a way to do it without pesticides that will harm the environment. And the whole idea is to be more productive in a smaller plot of land, so no more forest needs to be destroyed in order to grow their crops. Oh, a lot of pigs. So in other words, this is part of what they eat? This is part of, of what they eat. But remember, they don't go to a bank. This is a way of saving money. They sell them when they need cash, and when they have extra cash, they'll buy more. So it's a good way to keep money in the forest. Piggy banks. Piggy bank, I like this. So now, Juan, this, this looks like a, a nursery here in the middle of the jungle. That's precisely what it is, a nursery in the middle of the jungle. We are trying to grow jungle plants that uh, have only been taken out of the forest. The more products you can get out of the forest, the more valuable the, the forest will be, and the more incentives the people will have themselves to protect the forest. So now the natives have been taught, instead of burning and cutting the, the rainforest, that now they can get plants out of the forest for people in cities to enjoy. Oh, yeah and they, they, they get their cash, the forest stays, and conservation is served. Great idea. Are any of these plants medicines? We hear about all the medicines derived from the rainforest. Clusia uh, back there serves when you have warts. It will uh, get your warts uh, off. No kidding? I've got a wart coming on right here. Well, can we you can give, me, give it a try. Give me a try. There you go. Take one home. Okay, thank you, gracias. Take care of my wart. It's amazing. This looks just like a green, a big greenhouse. Yeah. Look here, here, here we have something very, very interesting. What's this that? is sandpaper. Golly. You use it to, to clean pots. 
you use it to clean the table. It's a, uh, out of the forest. It's amazing. The, it's an ancient use of this plant. It's just like exactly like sandpaper. Yeah. You yeah. mean the Mayans use this as sandpaper? Well, the, the Mayans surely use. Oh, look at that thing. <laughs> oh, it's like Velcro. Well, so you could say the Mayans invented Velcro. Huh? <laughs> it's like Velcro. Yeah, just like it. Back in Cancun, the natural world continues to recede as more and more tourists require more and more hotels. In Sean Khan, however, everybody wins. For the ecotourist, it's a rare opportunity to explore nature beyond the crowded beaches. For the friends of Sean Khan, the tourist dollar is a vital resource to help the wildlife reserve. Were you always interested in this? Why are you t doing this? Living out here in the jungles like this, with all these bugs and everything? Well, uh, somebody has to do it. We can't just pave over the planet. We have to save parts of it for our soul, for our children, for our Earth. As in any country, wildlife conservation in Mexico is not possible without the help of its people. But the people must survive off the land as well. In order to live, they will clear the forest and hunt the animals. In the long run, of course, there will be no more wildlife to hunt and no more good land to farm. It's been estimated that 70% of the jungle is already lost. Somehow, the people themselves must recognize the importance of their forest. Somehow, their natural resources must be kept renewable. The Mexican organization Pronatura was created to protect wildlife species and habitat diversity. The key to its success is helping the people understand the importance of their own forests. And that begins with the children. Here in the Southern Highlands, Pronatura encourages the youngsters of San Cristobal de las Casas to appreciate their rich heritage of plants and animals. Whew. Man, this is a long way for a nature class. Whew. Hey, adio, hola, 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 ¿qué tal? You speak English? Yes, I do. Oh, my name is Jack. Hi, Jack. It's a long nature walk. Yes. <laughs> oh, sweat in your, in your forehead. Sweat on my forehead, yes. <laughs> Hector Maldonado is a third grade social science teacher who brings his students to this outdoor classroom. Do you believe in this program? Do you think it helps? Oh, well, this is the books are fine uh, for their purpose, but they can touch and see and, and they hear from people that are very much involved with uh, nature and ecology. Kids love it. There's they a lot of energy for kids to be use and uh, coming up here and they they see the trees and uh, stops along the way where they say about the vegetation and the possibilities of finding animals. No, no. Is, it, is this tree sick? Sick tree. She's been showing where the spiders live. Yeah. Oh, the spiders, that's what she's saying. The spiders live under the leaves. Uh -huh. Oh, you see a spider? See, see, it's a bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. So the itsy bitsy spider lived all about. <laughs> okay, let's go. Yeah. That's what we teach the kids that we are walking in the lungs of the world because there are very few uh, jungles left in the world. You refer to it as the lungs of the world. What do you mean by that? Well, the trees provide oxygen in an environment that is polluted, so we breathe through the jungle. And we have the privilege to live nearby one, and uh, we come and enjoy, and now we're teaching the kids to respect it, to uh, enjoy it, have fun. You, We'll see the kids playing here, they'll love it. Oh, wow. Be careful, don't let him bite you. <laughs> Boy, thank you. Uh, Almost put my hand up. I'll put your hand there. Don't. So, how do you teach the kids about the wildlife in the jungle? 
We teach them the kind of animals that live in this environment and uh, to know them, if they understand uh, how they behave in their, in their habitat, they will interfere less with them and learn to uh, respect it and live with, uh, with the environment. Before they descend into the valley, the children remind themselves of the beauty and wonder of the forest. Pro natura, for nature. Pro natura. <laughs> Native Indian tradition and Mexican folklore often use animals to symbolize strength and wisdom. This puppet show is a wonderful way for the Mexicans to learn about their heritage, as well as learn about their native wildlife. Don't scare me like that. <laughs> In this story, a jaguar learns that a creature called man is destroying his forest. At first, he wants to kill this evil person. But the jaguar decides to make a deal. He will stay away from man, as long as man won't cut down his forest. There are very few jungles left in the world, and the Mexican people have the privilege of living near one. Here in their zoos and nature parks, we can all learn to respect the remaining forest and their wild inhabitants. 